Welcome to Smith Coding and Design. So in this week, our video tutorial will be making fixture plates for my micro arc. I recently purchased a micro arc fourth axis. And so the idea here is to go ahead and mount one of these eBay special self-centering vices to my fourth axis so that I am able to hold some rectangular stock. As you can see here, the bottom of the vise has a ton of mounting holes. I decided to just use the ones nearest to where the pins go. Those are M6, which matches the same thread size as the micro arc itself, so that made sense. I did run into a slight issue where you'll notice I have two fixture plates here. So this was the first one I made. And unfortunately, the Tormach model that I pulled off of their website, the mounting holes were incorrect. So this one doesn't mate to the micro arc. So what I ended up doing is just going ahead and 3D printing the fixture plate just to make sure I got all the mounting holes correct and then I went ahead and made a second one. You also notice there are two different surface finishes on the plate so this one I used a standard pocket and uh, I'm not impressed with how it came out. On the second version I used a 3D flat tool path to go ahead and finish the surface and I think it came out better. Let me know what you guys think. All right, and so that's what we'll get into this week. Uh, I hope you enjoy. All right, so here we are at the Tormach. You'll notice I have the fixture plate and the self-centering vise mounted to the micro arc. So I reached out on the Tormach Facebook group and I was pointed in the correct direction from a few gentlemen in terms of my issues with some of the diameters and the mounting holes not lining up on my fixture plate. It turns out there are quite a few people who have also had issues with the dimensions based on the Tormach provided model. I also discovered that there is a gentleman who sells a very similar adapter plate on eBay. So if you don't want to make your own, you can always purchase one. And you'll also notice over here that I have my Kurt vise attached to a Saunders pallet. So the idea there is anytime I'm going to use the fourth axis, I'll just go ahead and unbolt the pallet and use the fourth axis and then put the pallet back afterward. And I did test with a dial indicator or moving and installing the pallet again multiple times just to make sure my vise indicated in each time and it did without any issues so that is good so that's what I plan to do you also notice or you may also hear in the background my 3d printer and so what I'm doing is I'm printing a cover that will go over the micro arc so when I do use my traditional vise I can prevent any sort of chip buildup and coolant getting all over the micro arc so I think that will be another good feature Anyway, I hope that helps. All right, so here we are in Fusion 360. We're just going to go over the model rather quickly. So there's not much to it. We have a set of four pins in the middle here that our vise sits on. And we have a set of mounting holes. There's three on the outside for mounting the fixture plate to the fourth axis. And then there are four on the inside here that mount the vise to the fixture plate. They're all made for M6 socket cap screws. The other interesting feature to note here is you'll notice there's this flat spot and that flat spot is to help me locate the holes when I flip the part over and put it in a set of soft gels. So if I just kind of rotate here and for example if you Imagine that flat spot wasn't there. It would be hard to to rotate the circular part and have the holes line up perfectly for op two. So by putting that flat spot here, I'm able to essentially make a set of soft gels and then perfectly line up those holes. That way I can do the backside pocketing 
and the chamfering without any issues. And you'll see that when we get into the soft jaw tutorial. So that is it for the overview of the model. Of course, I'll provide a link in the description so that you can go and grab it and build one for yourself if you have a micro arc. All right, so now we'll jump over to the cam side of things. So what will be new for this week? So instead of probing the corner of our soft jaws to set our WCS, what I will be doing is taking advantage of some of the Tormach probing routines. And so what we'll do is we'll probe around the outside of the round stock to set our XY. And then we'll go ahead and probe the top of the stock to set our Z. So our WCS will be in the center of the stock. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, I prepped the stock by surfacing the top and bottom. Also interesting fact here is we'll be using the Superfly. So some of you saw in my tool library, I had a Superfly and requested that I used it. So we'll be using that for a facing operation on the first op and on the second op. So in terms of the first op, it will be sort of lighter cuts, but when we get to op two and we use the Superfly, let me zoom in here, you'll notice that there is a rather thick top hat of material. And so what I'll do is I will take some larger cuts with the Superfly and just try to remove the material and get to the top of our part in a reasonable amount of time. And so that pretty much does it for the overview of the cam. Again, two ops. First op, we're holding our stock in a set of soft gels made for four inch round bar, setting our WCS to the center. We're doing the same thing on op two. We have a different set of soft gels. And on this side, we're taking advantage of the flat. And again, we will, we will be using that same probing routine from op one to probe around the outside of our stock and set our WCS to the center. And so that does it. Please tune in and we will walk through all of the cam and see the videos of the tour mock machining the part and the series of tutorials that follow. Mm -hmm.